In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this spiral Pi Day design from scratch using Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. So here we are inside of Illustrator and first of all, the artboard I'm using is 450 pixels wide and 540 pixels high. That's the same aspect ratio as the Merge by Amazon dimensions, but it is a smaller pixel size. I've purposely done that because this design is very text heavy and for some reason Illustrator has trouble displaying a lot of text at a very high size. So just follow along with this smaller sizing. And first of all, what you want to do is head over here to the line segment tool, just left click onto that and hold down so we get the other tools suggested and you would assume that we're going to use the spiral tool but that actually creates some very ugly spirals that don't really look that nice especially with text on them so instead we're going to build our own spiral that's a bit more geometrical with the polar grid tool so hover over that and then let go of your left mouse and then you can just click anywhere on the artboard just left click onto it and this polar grid options window will come up. Now, I would recommend just copying the options that I have here. Now the width and height, that's still from the old artboard. I'm just going to adjust that. Let's put 400 and 400 pixels. Uh, the number, we're going to use 10. Um, make sure the number down here is set to zero. I think by default that has some dividers, which we don't need. And once you're done with that, essentially just hit okay. And as you can see, we get this sort of grid of circles. Uh, now, first of all, you will want to select a stroke color. Um, so just select black so we can see what's going on. And maybe I'll turn the stroke width up a little bit as well. So it's easier on the eye. And now we need to do a few things. First of all, you want to select the direct selection tool from the tool panel. You can also hit A on your keyboard to access that. And now we want to drag a box across the top half of these circles. So just try and copy me. Don't go over the center point like this. You want to stay above so we only get the topmost anchor points of all of these circles, if that makes any sense. So if we look in the middle, you only want to select the top anchor point of each circle with that box that we've dragged across with the direct selection tool. Once you've done that, hit Control X on your keyboard. That's going to cut all of those um, points out of our design, then click anywhere on the artboard so that your design is deselected and then hit Control F on your keyboard to paste all of that back in place. Now we've essentially split all of our circles in half. They're not connected anymore. And uh, now if we swap back to the selection tool, you can also press V to do that. Um, we'll see right here, we've got a lot of ungrouped circles. And at the bottom, these are all still grouped. So first of all, what we need to do next is group all of these at the top. So draw a box over them, then hit Control G on your keyboard. And now if we zoom in a little bit to the edge right here, we want to move the top circles over to the left while holding down shift. And we just want to move them until they hit the next line right here. So this is the result you want to get essentially. I'm just going to make this smaller so it's all on the white artboard and easier to see. If you didn't see those guidelines that I just had right there, the pink ones, then you'll have to go up to view and enable smart guides. Next up, you need to select all of these circles, everything that we've got on the artboard, and then hit Control Shift G to ungroup. You could also go up here to object and then click ungroup if that's too many keyboard combinations for you uh, but essentially we need to ungroup this a few times so that all of these segments are now um, individually movable or selectable and once that's done zoom into the middle and you want to first of all select this top tiny circle then this one and now we want to move downwards and always select each second line now this might make your eyes go a bit fuzzy but trust me it's going to work out so um, while holding down shift that's important so always hold down shift while clicking onto these lines click on this one then once again the second next one second next one second next one until we're out of lines. And once you're done with that, hit delete on your keyboard. And now we're going to do the same for the top half. So um, you want to select this one right here, the loose one, and then the second next, and the second next, and the second next. And there we go. That is all of them selected. Hit delete. And as you can see, now we've actually got a nice spiral right here that we can also then join together because at the moment all of these are still not connected. You can now select all of these right here and hit Control G or you could have also gone to Object Path J. 
join right there if you wanted to. So I like to rotate this a little bit as well so that the opening is at the top. Um, so just select the object and then turn this up like so and now we've got our path essentially ready it might be helpful to actually delete some of the center because um, these spiral designs look nice if we have like a pi symbol right here in the middle rather than just having the number pi all the way around um, so i'm going to delete a few of these anchor points right here let's delete this one as well and i recommend you do the same um, let's delete this one just so we have a bit of space for the pi symbol right there as well and now what's left is actually placing the text onto this path and for that we're going to use the type tool of course you can also hit T on your keyboard to access that and essentially you want to click somewhere on this path now for some reason depending on where you click you might get a different result sometimes it might not even show up the text so and for me it seems to work placing the text somewhere here in the middle and as you can see, now it's all circled around a spiral. Obviously, we don't want lorem ipsum preset text, but we want the actual pi number. And I do have it copied up here. And I'm going to leave a link in the description to a website which has uh, like a million digits of pi so you can just copy and paste it from there essentially once you've got your pi symbol ready or your pi number just click into your text and hit Control v to paste it into there you want to make sure first of all that the font size is quite a bit bigger so you can see the numbers clearly and you might notice that the number starts here 3.1 now we don't really want that we want it to start at the top and a quick way to fix that is if we select our text and then head up to type then go to type on a path type on a path options then if we flip this and hit preview you can see now it actually starts at the top you could also change the alignment to the path if you wanted to you could change it to center for example it doesn't make a massive difference but um, you get the idea you can play around with that a bit i would also recommend using the character window which if you don't see it anywhere on your dashboard is hidden in the window section under type right here so just tick character and then that should show up essentially what you want to also enable here is some tracking um, because by default this will be set to zero and as you can see that is going to create a very cramped set of numbers you don't have to put it all the way to 100 like I had it right there but I think creating a bit of space in between the numbers definitely helps and yeah so that is essentially it for the numbers around this spiral um, I'm just going to drag this pi symbol down right here which is by the way um, the Erica one Google font. This is um, a free font that anyone can download and use commercially. Uh, I will leave a link to that in the description as well because it does have quite a nice Pi symbol. So place that in the center right there. And now we are ready to, well, first of all, I would copy this over just in case you want to edit it later. Um, but we're now ready to actually outline all of this and then use it Photoshop to overlay a pattern. So object, expand, and okay and now all of this has been turned into a path which we can then drag into photoshop right here drop it um, i'm also going to leave a link a free download link to this tie-dye pattern down below which i created with ai so you can all use that in your designs um, it's also got a spiral effect which i think suits this pie day design quite well essentially you want to just place that over your design make sure it covers all of the letters so you don't want to have any black sticking out size it up right there then you want to um, go to the layers panel in the bottom hold down control and click onto the thumbnail of your vector smart object which is essentially your spiral design and once you've clicked onto that while holding control you can then move up to the tie-dye pattern and add a layer mask to that with our selection then you can hide the vector smart object or the original design and now if i enable the background you can see that our pattern has been cut out in that spiral design which looks really nice really pops it's very child friendly and just by the way this font as well it's a very nice playful sort of childish font uh, that one is called we'll just go back to this design in case anyone is wondering it is called child folk 
and I found that on Creative Fabrica. Once again, I will leave a link down below in the description to that as well, in case you want to use the same font. You don't have to, but um, I think using sort of a childish looking playful font is definitely useful for this type of design. So I hope you enjoyed this process. It's definitely really fun. And even if you don't use it for Pi Day, I think just knowing how to create um, these sort of unique shapes or paths and then placing some text onto them is really, really handy. If you use Adobe Illustrator a lot and you hate wasting time, then you would definitely be missing out if you don't watch this video next, where I show you six powerful Adobe Illustrator tips to maximize your productivity.